the use of a logarithmic scale for sound levels uh, derives from uh, observation by Weber and Fechner uh, and is a first attempt to reconnect our perception of a sound level, which is called loudness, and the actual physical uh, measurement. But that's not sufficient because our sensitivity uh, is not only logarithmic with respect to pressure, it is also very much dependent on the frequency of the sound. We already know that our ear is not able to perceive uh, sounds of very low frequency called infrasounds or sounds of very high frequency called ultrasounds but in fact even within the range of audible sounds our sensitivity varies very much. Um, this has been initially measured by Fletcher and Munson in 1933 but since then the measurements have been done over and over and over again with growing uh, sensitivity and repeatability and has led to uh, standardized uh, results called uh, equal loudness contour. The principle of the measurement by Fletcher and Munson is simple. They uh, exposed a large number of uh, people to uh, a reference sound at 1 kilohertz with a certain given level L and then exposed the same person to a sound at another frequency with initially the same level and they asked each individual participant to adapt the volume of the second sound until it matches, uh, it had the same perceived noise level as the first one and the result was another level L uh, prime and of course usually there was a difference between the two that was reflecting our increased or decreased sensitivity at that frequency with respect to uh, 1 kilohertz. Um, you see here the normalized uh, results and you can observe a number of things. Well, first of course that we have a low sensitivity at low frequency and at high frequency that we have a maximum sensitivity around 3 or 4 uh, kilohertz which corresponds to a resonance of our ear uh, canal. We'll talk about resonances later on but you can understand that uh, the ear canal which stops at the tympanic membrane uh, behaves like uh, a pan flute tube and that the resonance may uh, cause a higher sensitivity at that frequency. You also obviously notice that uh, the curve, the loudness uh, is equal to the, the loudness measured in phones is equal to uh, the, the sound pressure uh, level at 1 kilohertz by definition because that's what we have chosen as uh, reference, so a level of 70 phones and of 70 decibel mean exactly the same thing at 1 kilohertz. And then you also notice that the, the curves corresponding to the low levels um, and to high level are different and the higher you go in level the flatter the curves are. When you listen to very loud noise uh, you, you have less variation in sensitivity uh, with frequency. This observation by Fletcher and Munson and, and followers is so important that um, we, we, we want to use that information we have about, about the sensitivity of the ear to tweak uh, sound level uh, measurements to, to match that sensitivity, to take that differential uh, sensitivity into account. And that's why on sound level meters you can take measurements of what is called dB linear without any correction corresponding to the ear sensitivity or dBA, B or C. The A filter, B filter and C filters are based on the equal loudness contour. The A filter is normally for low-level sounds because it is based on the equal loudness contour at 40 decibel. The B filter corresponds to the 70 decibel curve and the C filter to the 100 decibel curve. A 
Unfortunately, over time, because people like simple things, it's the A filter that has become the reference and that is used more or less whatever the level uh, is, which is not absolutely correct, but at least people are now familiar with the DBA scale, which takes into account that, uh, th that, that filter. Note that there are also other filters like the D filter, the U filter, the G filter. Just a word about them. The D filter was originally designed specifically for aircraft noise, but is now fully replaced by the EPNDB scale, which I'm not going to detail in this course. The G filter is specifically for measuring a level associated with the very low frequency even the infrasound level so if there's a sound like wind turbine uh, that contains a significant uh, significant energy in the infrasonic scale you want to make a specific measurement for that and you are going to use the G filter so we're going to get dbg values 